Atsumu was never as glad he didn't do a challenge as now. Relief and worry washed over him when he read the messages of the other guys who did the challenge and failed so bad it almost looked like some couples were on the brink of breaking up. And some of the following events were really scary. Atsumu actually shivered when Kyotani, Hanamaki and Kawanishi sent their messages about what happened to them and their partners. And Osamu also called about Tsuna's accident. It was scary. Terrifying even. He never considered himself a superstitious person, but the challenge seemed to put certain unpleasant things in motion. And he didn't like it in the slightest. He hoped that the fact he didn't go into extreme when doing the challenge could save them from whatever fate the whole situation brought on them. Then again, Yahaba also didn't, and how did that end? He groaned and flopped down on the couch, burying his face into the cushions. Really what we needed, some stupid girls going around for doing a challenge. Great, really great. He felt a sharp tug on his ankle and groaned again, rolling over to face his frowning boyfriend. Change from the dirty clothes before you flop on couch. Atsumu wailed quietly, putting on his best tormented expression. But oh me, I'm tired. The practice was hard today. Can't you be a bit nicer to your poor, exhausted boyfriend and let him suffer in peace and comfort of your couch? Sakusa covered his eyebrow before pushing Atsumu's feet from the handrest, making him almost fall on the ground. It's your fault anyway. You shouldn't let Hinata drag you into extra practice every time. But I like to practice with Shokun. He's very appreciative of good tosses. He pursed his lips, pouting. Unlike someone. Sakusa rolled his eyes. Oh yes, I forgot. I'm the cruelest, the most horrible boyfriend ever whose only goal in life is to make your life as miserable as possible. End quote. What quote? Your quote from the last week. Or were you talking about someone else? Atsumu furrowed his brow. Sakusa's expression remained unchanged, and Atsumu couldn't tell if he was upset or just teasing him. That was a joke, Omi. You know I didn't mean it, right? He couldn't remember what exactly he said back then in the changing rooms after one of their practices, but it was something along the lines Sakusa said now. It wasn't meant seriously, they were just gossiping about their boyfriend's bad characteristics with Hinata and Boguto. His mind flashed back to one of the previous challenges they did, the one when he made Sakusa cry, and he would gladly kill himself. He got up and rushed to wrap Sakusa in a tight embrace. You know, I would never say something like that seriously, do you? Sakusa sighed and returned the hug after a bit of hesitation. Yeah, but it's still not nice to hear, you know, even as a joke. Atsumu tightened the hug. I'm sorry. I promise I won't say anything like this ever again. What do you say we go out tomorrow? When it's the day off. We can go to the park. There's a festival in the city so everyone will be there and the park will be empty. He felt Sakusa chuckle against his chest and let his shoulders relax. Alright, why not? But didn't you say just a while ago that you are so tired you won't get up from the bed at least for another two days? That was before. Now I have a new plan. Besides, I can be lazy afterwards. A little bit of fresh air helps with sleeping. And I have to show you how much I love you. Sakusa pulled away and flicked Atsumu's forehead. You can show me you love me by changing your clothes before sitting on the couch again. Because I'm not letting you near it until you have clean clothes on you. Oh, come on, Omi. Have mercy. I said I was sorry. Sumo? Yes? Go change, or no kisses for you today. Atsumo pouted, but let go of Sakusa's waist and rushed to the bedroom to change. He knew Sakusa was joking, but the prospect of no kisses was too terrifying for him to risk it.
He was right about the park being almost empty, save for a few people with dogs and one elderly couple. It was really lucky opportunity since he would probably never convince Sakusa to go with him otherwise due to his hatred of crowds. They walked around hand in hand, slowly sipping the boba tea they got a little while ago. The weather wasn't the nicest, more clouds than sunshine, but Atsumo didn't mind. At least it wasn't too hot or too cold, right in the pleasant temperatures. It was a nice time spent together, so nice it almost made him forget about the supposed girls haunting the participants of the prank. Almost. Half of his mind was on high alert, looking around for anything that could potentially cause harm to him or Sakusa. He waited much longer on the pedestrian crossing on their way to the park, a live image of what happened to Yamagata present in the back of his mind. He checked every darker alley and sped up around them to get away as soon as possible, eyeing closely everyone who seemed suspicious. He felt Sakusa watching him with a raised eyebrow and hoped his boyfriend would pass it as him being weird, which he probably was. Believing there is a curse hanging above our heads for doing a damn prank is weird. But better safe than sorry. Sakusa also didn't comment on it, but Atsumu was sure he was thinking hard about it. He could tell from the tiny wrinkles around his eyes, the only part of his face he could see over the mask. He relaxed only when they entered the park. There wasn't much that could happen, right? It was an open space where they would see anyone coming to them from a mile away, and there weren't any cars either. Still, he did occasionally look around to assess some possible threats. Nothing will surprise me. I'll make sure of it. No curse can get us. I just have to stay vigilant. Atsumu, what are you doing? Atsumu snapped out of his thoughts, giving Sakusa a sheepish look. Uh, sorry, I'm just, um, looking at birds. Sakusa looked at him with his... Seriously, gaze before looking around the tree branches. Birds. Yeah, birds. I heard some in the trees around, so I was looking for them in case we could see them. He still didn't tell Sakusa he was also part of the prank. He didn't think it was important since nothing so serious happened. Sakusa could be left in sweet ignorance, thinking Atsumu was just tired or dehydrated. He made Osamu and Suna swear they won't tell a word to Sakusa about the prank when they visited Suna in hospital two days ago. Osamu just rolled his eyes, and Suna was apparently glad for another blackmail material, but they kept their word and didn't tell Sakusa anything. Though, now that he watched Sakusa's doubtful expression, he thought if it wouldn't be better if he told him about the prank after all. Nothing too serious happened, right? He didn't go all the way through it. Sure, he scared him a bit, but definitely not as much as some of the others. At least he wouldn't look like an idiot right now. And he could tell Sakusa to be careful without sounding overprotective. Sakusa sighed and stopped, stopping Atsumu too thanks to their connected hands. Seriously, Tsumu, you've been acting off for the last few days. What's wrong? You look like a rabbit looking around for foxes. Which is kinda ironic, if you ask me. Atsumu shrugged, hoping it would help to ease Sakusa's concerns. I'm just more careful. Did you hear that the number of accidents involving cars and pedestrians grew by about 30% recently? You just made that up. Well, maybe. But that's not the point. Getting hit by a car is serious. He shivered slightly both from the gust of cold wind blowing right through his clothes and the mental image of how it must feel to get hit by a car. Sure, I can agree with that, but why are you so conscious about it now? Remember Yamagata? Former Shirato Rizawa Libero, he's in the group chat sometimes. He got hit by a car just a week ago. They don't even know if he'll be able to walk well anymore, let alone play volleyball. I don't want that to happen to us. There was another gust of wind, much stronger this time, 
and he could hear the branches cracking against each other above his head in the silence that followed after his words. Sakusa gaped in shock. That's... I had no idea. Why didn't you tell me? Atsumu panicked a bit. Should he tell him? Or better keep quiet? Well, you see... There was this challenge we did, and... There was a sharp crack right above his head, followed by several more. Sakusa looked up, his eyes widening. Look out! Atsumu yelped and stumbled, falling on his butt as Sakusa pushed him away. Not even a second later, a large branch came tumbling down from the tree next to them. Atsumu could only watch in horror as the branch hit Sakusa's back, sending him to the ground with pained cry. Homie! No, 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 no. He scrambled to his knees, panic rising in his chest upon hearing the muffled gasps leaving Sakusa's mouth. The branch was pinning him to the ground, lying over his lower back and legs. It was completely dry, probably the reason why it fell, but looked quite heavy nonetheless. Atsumu's hands hovered above it, unsure what to do. He pulled the mask off Sakusa's face, his chest clenching upon seeing his boyfriend's face scrunched in agony. Fuck. Hurts. Okay, okay, hold on a bit, okay? I'll call you help. Just hold on. He quickly fished out his phone, fumbling with the numbers until he managed to tap the right ones on the third attempt. What's your emergency? Please send an ambulance to the park near the train station. There's... A branch fell on my partner. He's... He's hurt and in pain. Please send someone quickly. Alright, you have to stay calm, okay? The ambulance will be there in a few minutes. Is your partner conscious? Yes, it it fell on his back when he he pushed me away. I think his legs might be hurt or, or his back. I, What do I do? Don't remove the branch under any circumstances. Wait for the medics to arrive. For now, you have to keep your partner conscious. Don't move with him and don't let him raise his head. Atsumu took a shuddered breath. Okay. I can do that. He put the phone next to him on speaker and squeezed Sakusa's hand. It's going to be okay, Ome. Just hold on for a bit. Help us on the way, I promise. Tsumu, how do you... He gritted his teeth, his ink in pain, and Atsumu's throat tightened. He gently held Sakusa's head by the ground. It's okay, I'm fine, and you'll be too, I promise. It's not that bad. Nothing you couldn't handle. It hurts. Bad. Atsumu bit his lip and quickly wiped his eyes to see more clearly. I know. It will be fine. You'll see. Just stay with me for now, okay? The help will be there in no time and then it will be all okay again. Please be okay. He really started to hate the smell of hospitals. But this time, it was much worse than when they went to visit Suna. This was his boyfriend's health that was at stake. He paced nervously around the hallway, drinking his fourth cup of the horrible hot chocolate from the drink machine, hoping it would help to calm down his nerves. Goddamn prank! Maybe it really was cursed. He felt his phone vibrating in his pocket. He checked the name on the screen and sat down on the nearest chair. On call. Hey, how's he doing? Atsumu sighed, rubbing his face with his free hand. I don't know. He's still out after the surgery. They allowed me in for a while, but they are doing some checkup now and kicked me out. Well, at least he's in normal room. That's a good sign, right? I guess. He said he has fractured pelvic bone and one hip joint was damaged, but otherwise his back should be okay. That's good to hear. It could have been much worse if you ask me. Yeah, but what if he stays with some permanent damage? What if he won't be able to play anymore? 
or he will have to have many other surgeries to make everything right. Zumo. It was supposed to be me, Samu. If he didn't push me away... Yes, he pushed you away and probably saved your life. That branch could fall on your head, and what then? But... Hey, he saved you, so be grateful and don't wallow in self-loathing. You are both alive, that's important. Atsumo sighed. I guess you have a point there. Of course I have. I was always the wiser one of us. When? You are as dumb as I am. As if. Remember first year of junior high? Atsumo huffed, unpleasant memories of their scary teacher and the ruler in her hand flooding his mind. Me don't talk about that, okay? That was one time and ages ago. And you got smacked too. Yeah, but only from solidarity. What does that even mean? Me Atsumu. Atsumu startled. Yes? You can go inside now. He's waking up and asking for you. Atsumu rejoiced, his heart speeding up. Samu, I... Yeah, yeah, I heard. Go to your man. Let us know how he is. And tell him I'm grateful he saved your sorry ass. Hey! Call ended. Atsumu grumbled under his breath, but then quickly hid his phone and rushed to the room. Sakusa still looked a bit dazed after the anesthesia, but he seemed to register his surroundings well enough. Atsumu pushed the chair to the bed and gently squeezed his hand, a white smile making its way to his face. Sumu. Yeah. Welcome back, dear. Sakusa returned to squeeze to his hand, and his features relaxed as his eyes fixed on Atsumu. You are okay. Of course. You saved me. He gently kissed his fingers. Thank you. He decided it was better not to mention he shouldn't have. Osamu was right. He should be grateful for his boyfriend's dedication to keep him unharmed and do whatever it took to return the favor, not pity him. Sakusa sighed softly, his forehead scrunching. It was a reflex. I couldn't... I couldn't let that thing fall on you. I know, you're my hero. Though I would prefer if you didn't get hurt either. But we can do this. It will be alright. I'll help you with everything, I promise. Sakusa gave him a small smile and another light squeeze to his hand. You sure you are ready to clean the whole flood by yourself until I can move again? Atsumu puffed out his chest, raising his chin. Of course. Anything you will need, your caring and perfect boyfriend will get you and any wish will be fulfilled in no time. Sakusa snorted quietly. All right, I'll take your word for it. He paused for a moment before looking at Atsumu with pleading eyes. Will you stay here with me? Atsumu smiled and leaned in to give him a short kiss. Of course, I'll always be here. Unless they kick me out again. But I will be back after that. I promise. Sakusa nodded and relaxed back into the pillow. Thank you.